Welcome to DEF CON 3. I'm KT McFarland. From corporate hacks to cyber attacks during this year's presidential election, we're all on high alert. We're hoping to keep not only our most personal information safe, but also our national security information. Joining us with his take on these cyber threats is Jack Weiss, president of Blue Line Grid. And he's joining us from Los Angeles. Uh, Jack, so is it possible to assume that we can ever have secure communications again after what we've just seen with the election? I, I, I think pure ultimate security is probably gone by the wayside. Um, there are smart things that governments, that agencies, and that individuals can do to pen in security and privacy um, a little bit, but the new normal is different, and it's going to change every six months with each iOS system that gets uh, released by Apple with each uh, improvement in the Android system. So uh, the new normal is going to shift quickly, and we need to shift with it. All right, so how do we shift with it? Well, uh, first, we need to assess what are our vital interests, what have been the threats to us, whether they are uh, the Russian cyber attacks during the election, whether they are the threat of ISIS in the Middle East, and how we can use their arsenal of social media in sort of a jujitsu method against them, and how we can protect our agencies domestically, how we can protect uh, ourselves and make sure that our own individual information is protected properly. You know, we've, we've seen, so far, we've seen a couple of kinds of cyber attacks. One, um, WikiLeaks, where they release information that may endanger national security. But we've seen a second kind, which is embarrassing stuff. We've probably seen the third kind, um, which is cyber theft, of, of ta stealing research and development, blueprints of American industries that then show up in other countries and other in where they manufacture products based on our very expensive research and development. So when you look at the whole big picture, is there a civilian, a sort of a blanket protection we can do over the United States for the civilian economy? Or is it going to be up to every individual company, business, law enforcement community, government agency to do it themselves? Well, people need to be smarter. And let's start right at the top. Let's take the John Podesta example mm -hmm. as a teachable moment. Um, what did he apparently do? He apparently clicked on a link in what we call a spear phishing email, presumably from Russian intelligence. When he clicked on that link in an email that apparently looked like it was from the Google email administrator, um, he gave the attacker control of his account. And it's, it's at the top of everyone's list of things you should not do. You don't click on links in emails from uh, anything that could at all be suspect. But even taking a step back, Katie, um, one of the things that's truly remarkable about the Podesta situation is it's been widely reported that his password itself was a play on the fact that he is an avid runner. It had the word runner or running in his password. Something Now, he's a famous guy, you could know that, but all of us have social media accounts. We need to make sure that we lock down our privacy controls so that things about ourselves that can be socially engineered to guess our passwords uh, are more secure. And uh, you could be at a government agency, you could be chairman of a presidential campaign, uh, or you could be a private citizen. We're all subject to potential social engineering attacks, mm -hmm. just as we are subject to spear phishing. Yeah, but you know, Jack, if somebody, is there some place like in the basement of the Kremlin or somewhere in, in China where they're sitting down trying to look at John Q. Public and say, I'm going to guess his password, I'm going to find out, you know, what he's talking about when he talks to his children or schedules his car repair appointments, or is it something bigger than that? Well, it is bigger than that. Look, Yahoo was uh, just recently announced that it was hacked over the past few years. As many as 500 million accounts were compromised, um, passwords potentially among them. And so if you are among those victims of the Yahoo attack and you had as your Yahoo password the same password you've used for your other accounts, then those uh, passwords are sitting in a basement mm -hmm. somewhere. And, and someone can hack into them. Uh, they could end up on the black market, uh, and you know Nigerian hackers could be trying to hack into your MasterCard or your banking account. So very simple steps such as having multiple passwords for multiple accounts, not having passwords that outsiders can guess, using multi-factor authentication so that whenever someone tries to access one of your accounts, you get a text on your cell phone. Mm -hmm. These are very simple things people can do, and frankly, 
that people in positions of authority must do to protect their accounts. Jack, I am going to run right to my iPhone right now and fix it. So thank you so much, Jack Weiss of Blue Line Grid, talking to us about the personal as well as the national security implications of cyber attacks. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank and you, Katie. If you want to find out more about this or any other topic, the best place to go online, foxnews.com.